Welcome everybody to Command Combat Battle Reports, and today we have an entire war. The Great War, to be exact. Well, it wasn't quite so great for those who were involved in it, and we know it as World War I. We're going to play the Axis and Allies World War I full war game. Each video is going to consist of two turns, which we in this game deemed as being one full year. Basically, the first turn is the beginning of the year, and the second turn is the end of the year. When you look at the events in the game, such as the Russian Revolution and the U.S. getting involved, it kind of comes out to that. Of course, things could turn out differently, being that this is a game. Let's see how it goes. We begin at the very beginning of the war with Austria. They purchase a couple units of planes, some infantry, and one artillery piece. This is their starting setup. You can see the countries around them. And they, of course, begin by invading Serbia. Serbia tries to fight back. But, of course, Austria is overwhelming them, and they take both Serbia and Albania. Knowing that the Russians won't stand for that, they shift some forces northward. Next is the Russians, and they purchase the exact same things that the Austrians did. The Austrians have their sigil there for some reason. Maybe it's because they're copying their purchasing options. They shift their forces towards the Austrian front, some to the German front, knowing that they're going to join as well. And they place their purchased units, which ends their turn, they're not going to do any invading. Germany is next, and they purchase half land units and half sea units, plus a fighter plane unit. They're going to shake things up a bit. They shift some units to the borders, and they also invade Belgium. Belgium tries to defend itself, and gets defeated but whittles down some of the German units. The Germans are weaker there because they really have not put a large force up against the French. Maybe they don't expect them to be a threat. And now down in Africa, They've got some units at their colonies, so they move further inland to take some land from the Africans. Also, it looks like they're moving towards one another to consolidate. Now their navy makes a bold move and moves on down the British. One of the submarines is sunk on a mine, but there are plenty more to attack. And they destroy the British navy. They took some heavy losses themselves, but that is one heck of a feat to take down the British navy right here at the beginning of the game. Satisfied with what they've done, they've placed their purchased units, and we move on to the next turn. It's time for the French to answer back, and they purchase four infantry and two artillery. They counterattack into Belgium, and they damage the Germans, but they do not take them down, and so they dig in for an elongated battle. In Africa, their transports pick up their units in Algeria and Tunisia, and swing them around to French West Africa. There they will be stopping the German invasion up the coast. The French place their units, and we move on to the next turn. The British are not going to be able to get across to defend France yet, so they purchase an air unit that can fly over, and navy units to fight back. They shift their infantry around to protect against the German invasion, now that they threaten their shoreline. They bring artillery in via convoy from Canada, and in the Belgian Congo they crowd in on the Germans from three sides. And their role is terrible, just look at that! The Germans meanwhile have held them off, destroying one of the invading units, and holding on to the Belgian Congo. One of the best German generals was in Africa, so this makes sense, I guess this is him. They place their units and we move on to the next turn. The Ottomans get a couple infantry, an artillery unit, and some air power. They move into Bulgaria where friendly units join their cause. They also move into Svestopol, where the Russian population is not so happy to see them. They shift some units around, and you can see their navy is facing off against the Russian navy, but neither one is moving in to attack the other. And that's when we move on to Italy. They join the fight with an additional artillery unit and cruiser. They move up to the borderland of Venice to defend against an Austrian invasion. They place their units, and that is the end of the entire turn. We are now at the end of early 1914 and moving on to the latter part of the year. The Austrians just grab a whole bunch of infantry. That's 10 infantry units they are purchasing in just this turn. They then begin their invasion of Italy by attacking Venice. The battle is fierce. They both lose a lot of men, but the Italians hold their ground and they dig in for a longer battle. The Austrians also invade Romania, where they also do a lot of damage, but do not quite push through. They've basically set up an attack for the Ottomans. The Austrians put in their horde of infantry, and that ends the turn. On to the Russians' answer, and they're purchasing some infantry, one artillery, and one air unit. They fight back in Romania, but it's still unresolved and they shift forces to defend against the Ottomans. We go to the Germans, who are buying a whole lot of stuff there, and they reinforce Belgium, pressing the attack, and they push out the French. They only have a few forces left there, but the British can't get across the sea. They're watching helplessly with a whole lot of infantry, 
and the French will have to come at them again. This might just become a war of attrition, just like the real war. And on the Eastern Front we can see where the Germans have concentrated their forces! They're invading Poland with just about everything they have! Well that sounds familiar. And after a mighty battle, the Russians are barely holding on with one infantry unit and one artillery unit. The Germans almost took them out this turn, but just came a hair's breadth from destroying them. The Russians sure know how to hold out. The Germans now move on to Holland, but are not able to break through and conquer the territory. And in the Belgian Congo, the German reinforcements come in and destroy what's left of the British. There are no more British units in that area. The Germans control Central Africa. They get their reinforcements, and it's the end of their turn. On to the French and how they're going to answer. They get four infantry and two air units. They move up to the front, but do not engage. They're concentrating their forces to be able to take on the Germans full force. Their units in Africa, though, move in on the Gold Coast and take the Germans out of there, giving the land back to its original owners. Who am I kidding? They're not giving it to their original owners. They're giving it to the British. And the French get their purchase forces in Paris. The British do not even try to get any land units. They get a couple air units and a battleship to try to take back the sea. They meanwhile land their artillery in France and fly over their air power to help with the defense and eventual counterattack. In Africa, the British move up from South Africa into Southwest Africa, slowly taking land back from the Germans. They also move in from the north. Their navy, meanwhile, is concentrated over there on the right, not ready yet to go into the Mediterranean Sea. They place down their battleship and their air power and the French are done with their turn. The Ottomans buy a couple of infantry, some artillery, and air power, which seems to be common in this game. And they move in on Romania's flank. Using combined arms, they take out the Russians from there, claiming the territory as their own. They also move more forces up into Sevastopol, preparing for an all-out attack on Russia. They place their new forces in Constantinople, and we move to the Italians, who are only able to buy two infantry units. They move what they have to reinforce Venice, and engage the Austrians. It's becoming a battle of attrition as they both slowly whittle one another down. They place their new forces in Rome, and that's where we're going to leave it. 1914 ends with the forces where you see them. The Austrians are making a push into Italy, but are stuck at Venice. The Germans and Ottomans are making a pincer movement into Russia, slowly moving towards Moscow. France is building up for a counterattack in the west, and Britain is unable to get across the sea to reinforce them. In Africa, Germany has the center, while Britain and France are coming in from the sides. Who's going to win this all-out war to end all wars? We're going to have to wait and find out as 1915 comes along in the next video. Be sure to continue on to find out what happens. In the meantime, thank you all for watching. Be sure to subscribe so you know when the next part of this comes out and to see our many other videos. Happy gaming, everybody! What do you think is going to happen next? What should they do next? And what should they have done in the video that you saw? Comment your opinions below. Also support us on Patreon because beer ain't cheap. Subscribe below, thumb us and ring our bell, and find us on all our social media. See you next time!